I would like to know exactly how you did that. He said, uh, I know exactly how you found those four cards. And of course, I was curious to know exactly what his theory was. So I said, well, how do you think I did that? And he said, well, before the show, you pre-stacked those cards. You took the four kings and pre-positioned them. So the first king, for example, was down 10 cards. Down 10 cards. The second card was uh, 20. The third king was 30th. And the fourth king was 40th in the deck. That way, no matter how much you cut and shuffle those cards, you always knew where the four kings were. I said, that's a very interesting theory. The only problem with that theory is that the 10th, 20th, 30th and 40th position in the deck are exactly where I keep the one, two, three, four aces. <laughs> Your job is to keep track of those four cards. No matter what I, do, what I do, you have to keep track of the four. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit too quickly, Karen, so I'll, I'll slow down a little bit and give the cards a shuffle and get you to uh, just reach over and cut off about, let's see, cut off about a third of the deck. Just grab a third off the top. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And that should be the first ace. Okay, so there's no ace over here and there's no ace over here. Now, we'll mix them up a little bit more, just so it doesn't look too easy, Karen, and get Karim to reach over and cut off about a third of the deck. Okay. And let's see now. That, uh, well, that feels pretty good to me. That should be the second ace. Remember, if you cut here, you would have missed it. If you cut here, you would have missed it. So. And I know what you're saying to yourself, Karen. You're saying, if only you had Corinne's hands and my mind. There you go. That's one, two, three, four, sevens. Now, here's the way it would work. If I didn't have a partner to cut for me, I'd take the cards like this, get the four sevens on the bottom of the deck. Now, if the cards are cut, I'm in trouble because the cards are going to be buried in the middle of the deck. You can see the four sevens are going to be locked into the middle of the deck. No monkey business about that. Yet, if I use the center deal, I should be able to get those four cards out of the middle, and it looks something like this. As I deal the cards around the table, when I get to my hand, I just reach under and take a seven straight from the middle. That's two sevens. Of course, uh, this should give me three of a kind, and finally, you can see that's all four sevens coming from the middle of the deck. Thank you. But what people don't realise is that the center deal is actually even better if you're working with a partner because the partner can come to the game separately and you don't even have to talk to each other in the game. You can uh, give him winning hands all night long, split the plot later on, there's no heat. So here's the way it works. If you have the four sevens on the bottom of the deck, the sevens are, of course, cut into the middle. Now, Corinne, which hand gets the sevens? One, two, three or four? Two. The second player gets the four sevens on the deal. So I'm going to do the center deal again for you. Once again, face up so that you can see the cards coming from the middle of the deck. So that's the first seven. That's, uh, that's a pair. I'll try it again. That's the um, second three of the kind, sorry. And finally, that's all four sevens coming from the middle of the deck. And they call that a center deal. <laughs> of course, uh, actually, there's a third way you can work this game, and that is if this guy isn't your partner. This guy's a sucker. And that, in that case, you would actually deal yourself one, two, three, four aces. <laughs>